rain coming down now, but that won't be a problem. It truly is the calm before the storm because this place will be rocking on Saturday night. That's right, on Cycle Drag, we've shown you a lot of special races, but there is nothing out there quite as unique or special as this. And it is this man's vision. Move over P.T. Barnum. Move over Vince McMahon. Move over Walt Disney because the greatest promoter in the world is next to me, Bill Bader Jr. This is your vision. We're here once again. What can we expect this year, Night Under Fire? Well, I think it's going to be a tremendous show. We have an incredible talent lineup. We have added more budget to fireworks. Uh, we're going to be introducing first ever surround pyro that will be shooting from all directions from eight different launch points on the property. So we're excited about that. And, and, and obviously, uh, with the passing of my dad, we want to deliver this show. We're dedicating this to him and, and um, he's going to be watching and he's going to be uh, he'll have his re report card and he'll be taking notes. So we want to deliver an incredible show for our fans. We want to dedicate it to my dad. And we want people to just come here Saturday night. It's going to be a blast. No doubt about that. And we certainly send you our condolences, our thoughts and prayers. It was so wonderful to work with your father up in the tower last year. He rolled up his sleeves and I said, I said, Mr. Bader, what are you doing here? He said, my son needs help. That's the kind of man he was. Absolutely. I asked him if he would come back from Idaho to help. He did. And then on Monday, he gave me two pages of notes of things that I need to improve on uh, for next year. So um, it was wonderful having him here. I, would, I didn't know at that time it would be the last year. Uh, so that probably makes it a little more special. And uh, um, yeah, we're, we're, I, I really want to deliver this show this year for everybody. Well, you say last, but I think he's got the best seat in the house here this year. We're definitely going to feel him with us. I want to ask you quickly about Top Fuel Motorcycles. Last year, we brought you a freak show. It was great. We had turbo. We had nitrous. This year, we have four nitro bikes that just wanted to battle it out for ultimate bragging rights. What's your impression of the Top Fuel Motorcycles we're bringing and the return of Larry Spider-Man McBride? You know, it's been over a decade since Larry's been here, and I can't believe it's been that long because he has such an extraordinary competitor uh, a 21 time champion i believe the guy is top fuel motorcycle racing i mean larry spider-man mcbride um, is extraordinary in every way and i had the opportunity to park him yesterday he, he has so much energy and so much enthusiasm after doing this for as long as he has he was like a kid in the pit area uh, yesterday getting parked and and all excited about the race but we have I believe the four thanks to uh, Pingle and to Cycle Drag we have four of the preeminent names in Top Fuel Motorcycles and I think there's probably enough ego that every guy thinks they're over there and can go quick enough and go fast enough um, there's only going to be one champion I don't know who it's going to be we can sit here on paper and say Larry's run the quickest Larry's been the fastest but on paper and seeing it on the racetrack, it doesn't always translate the same way. And I know uh, Van Tyne has something to say about that. Uh, I know uh, Brown and Wills have something to say about that. And, and you kind of uncovered a little rivalry within a rivalry there as to who should be the number one plate holder. Um, and maybe we'll see those two line up tomorrow night alongside each other. Well, like I said, I love speaking your language because I took a little bit of heat for uncovering that. But, hey, it's all about those rivalries, right? A little Absolutely. Jeff Gordon, Dale Earnhardt. Absolutely. Listen, Pittsburgh, the Pittsburgh Steelers-Cleveland Browns rivalry, the Ohio State-Michigan rivalry, without that rivalry, it's just another football game. So um, while it's uncomfortable and sometimes difficult to talk about, um, it's what fans want to know, and it's transparent, and it's real. And um, I, my feeling is we'll find out tomorrow, uh, tomorrow night after first round who's the true number one, right? I can't wait. It's going to be a great show. Last question for you because I know you're busy. Every promoter in the world wants to have an event like this. The live event business is so mystifying. It's so intriguing. I remember one time Vince McMahon said what he sees more than anything is diminishing uh, attention. Everybody, it's, it's ADD society. Yep. It's hard to get people to come out. It's hard to get them to pay attention. You have really created this special product where I'm not just saying this because I'm next to you. I believe I could bring any casual fan out and they could have a good time whether they're a motorsports fan or not. Mm -hmm. That being said, what is the biggest lesson you have learned? What is the biggest piece of advice maybe you could pass on about this event that you have created? 
Well, I think don't get enamored with any one thing because too much of any one thing is a bad thing. We don't need 16 top fuel dragsters or 16 fuel funny cars. We've got six of this. We've got four of that. We have eight of this. We have two of this. Um, I don't think it's about uh, volume. I think it's about looks and transitions. And why is Top Fuel Motorcycle so cool? Because it's unique and different. And these guys are going ridiculous speeds. Um, and and in, a, in a sport that can take your life in a, bl in a blink of an eye. So I think we have a look. We have a Fuel Funny Car look. We have a Top Fuel Motorcycle look. We've got a Gasser look. We've got a Pro Mod look. Um, so we've got different looks and feels. We'll have a monster truck attempting a new Guinness record tomorrow night. So I think it's about the transitioning, the looks, the feels from, from uh, uh, product A to product B. Um, as a, because people do not have, we live in an era of a shortening attention span that went from hours to minutes to seconds. And that's a beautiful thing about our sport. We show that we can show them something different every four and a half seconds. I could talk to you all day. I said last question. I'm going to sneak in one more. We have, unfortunately, a problem in drag racing. It is so nice to come here and see the stronghold that you have with this, this palace, this illustrious place. We're losing drag strips left and right elsewhere. Um, drag racing as a whole, what's it need to do to survive? What's it need to do to get these Gen Zs interested? Well, I think um, that is a complicated question, but I think we have lost sight of the most important thing, and that is the guest experience. I think we need to focus on the guest. I think we need to build everything around mom, dad, and the kids. Um, we are affordable family entertainment. We are Americana through and through. We're God and country. We're red, white, and blue. Um, and we we think we're in the drag racing business. And you can sit on, you can put up a lawn chair alongside of any major highway and watch drag racing take place for free 24-7, 365. We need to focus on family-centric entertainment. And I think if we get back to that, we need to offer a value message. We charge too much. We offer too little. Um, it's not rocket science. And, it, and it's also not a mystery why uh, drag racing is struggling right now. Very well said. He's got a show to put together, so we're going to let him get to work. But you remind me of something you told me when I was a nervous announcer up there, 18 years old, something his dad told him. We're not in the racing business, kid. We're in the entertainment business. Very, very true. Guys, get here if you can. The Cornwell Tolls Night Under Fire is going to be crazy. Ice cream for a buck, jet cars, NHRA stars, Larry McBride, Sam Wills, Dave Vantine, Mitch Brown, and more fireworks than more ever. Fireworks. More batter. fireworks than ever. Get here if you can. Thanks so much. This weekend, it is the Pingle Top Fuel Motorcycle Shootout presented by Cycle Drag. The namesake, of course, thanks to this young lady, Mrs. Donna Pingle. Thank you so much. You make such amazing components for motorcycles. But really, what fascinates me with you and Wayne, you've tirelessly supported Top Fuel Motorcycles now for more than three decades. How did this come to be? Uh, we just find that uh, that particular category is the most exciting racing there is out there in motorcycles and we've just stuck with it and we we're very happy that we moved on to helping Larry and being involved with him because there is nobody better at this point. Well definitely agree with you on the excitement and I gotta ask you this too we've been to a lot of races throughout the years where we love this stuff so much we've been to those races where there's 10 people in the stands for these gentlemen to have an opportunity in front of an expected crowd of 40,000 what do you think that means to them and the sport? I can't, it's been too long for them to, to, to finally be able to do this. So we thank, we thank you at Cycle Drag for doing this, getting this rolling. This is amazing. Well, thank you for all your support. Guys, make sure you got the Pingle fuel valve, the wheel chalk, all the goodies. Check them out at Pingle Online. We are dead even locked, wheel to wheel, bar to bar, down through the stripe, wheel light coming on, on a whole shot. Jake Storter! Jake the Snake on a whole shot! On a whole shot! 649 takes out a 646 on a whole shot! Making sure we don't have one in the sand, guys. Making sure we don't have one in the sand. And Sam 
Wills, I believe, went into the sand trap. He is Mr. Nitro Conspiracy. He's been doing this since the mid-70s. Mr. Sam Wills, I'm so glad you're here. Now, right last here. year, though. Last year, I don't want to bring up any bad memories. You went into the sand, or as you call it, the kitty litter, but we do have a new break. Tell me about it. Well, we went ahead and made the decision after last year we needed more rear brakes, so we went to a carbon brake, and it's carbon disc and carbon pads, and it's a lot better. Uh, part of the reason I ran into the kitty litter last year is I was trying to catch somebody, and I, I ran it way past the lights and just can't do it on this racetrack. Well, I'm glad you got the good break on this year. We got definitely a game field here, four tough racers. We are racing for a win. How do you like your chances? Well, my chances are as good as anybody. It's nitro. <laughs> if it'll start and run, you got a chance. He knows better than anybody. He's the legend, Sam Wills, looking for a win this weekend. The second quickest active top fuel motorcycle racer in the world. He's Mr. 571 Dave Vantine. First thing I got to ask you about the mustache. I love it. Is it Top Gun inspired? Where did it come from? <laughs> well, I wish I was Tom Cruise, but I'm not. Um, well, you know what? I mean, with all due respect, Chip Ellis, I got looking at all the videos and I thought, geez, you know, I had a white beard, you know, it goes with my white hair. And I thought, well, I should probably get rid of that. So I shaved my beard off. I left the mustache, which I've had since, so oh, I don't know, in 1982. So uh, Jack is the second person to be like, nice mustache. I'm like, well, it's been around for a while. I just got rid of the beard. There you go. We get all the important questions out of the way here on Cycle Track. <laughs> Here's the most important question. Last year, you entered this race as the odds on favorite. You ran very, very well, and then you had a problem crossing yep. the center line. It seems like your team has rectified that. Now you have a chance for redemption. What's going through your mind as you enter year two? Well, what happened was um, we had uh, uh, some wheelie bars that were compromised, and uh, the McBrides made a new set. Uh, actually, I believe it's the same set that Larry went a 561 on. They have a, a cage around the back, much more well-supported. Bike goes straight as an arrow, so hopefully this year that's good. Well, we wish you all the best here. Game field, some people talking about uh, how a little bit of a short porch here at Norwalk, but you can still go fast with the carbon carbon. What's your feeling on that? Uh, last year we went 595, clicking it early, um, and we had room. So, you know, I think I can run it through. Um, I think you can go 250 here. Woo, 250. Watch out for him, guys. He is the yellow bullet, Dave Vantine. Problems, Mitch. Ashley out of here. Wait a minute. Ashley drifting towards the center line. Ashley crosses a disqualification. Guys, guys, where's Todd? We talked. We talked. We talked about the horseshoe. Mitch was done. Ashley crosses the center line. You guys are the champs. How in the world? I'll tell you what. Mitch has got some horseshoe, some clover over there. Look at ours, Mitch. Unbelievable, guys. Yeah. Congratulations. Congratulations. Wow. It's been said, luck is when preparedness meets opportunity. Mitch was there. Ashley, way out in front, he had this thing won, but right here he gets into problems. Remember, Pro Mod not used to running quarter mile. He can't bring it back. He doesn't know how close Mitch is. Mitch wins. Sam, what, what, describe what that is to our viewers at home, please. It, it drives the fuel pump and the oil pump. Sam, have you ever seen anybody with a bigger horseshoe? <laughs> hey, God bless them, no disrespect. That's, that's part of racing. That's luck. part 
of racing. The Nitro God smiling. Yeah. And of course, I'd be remiss if I didn't cover last year's winner, the 2020 Man Cup champion, Mitch Brown. Take a look at this, guys. This is the vibe in the pits. It's a business trip for Mitch. He's not out socializing. He's not out commingling. He wants to win this race. Him and his team, a little bit of a new rivalry ignited between him and the Spider-Man. And we're going to see these two face off Saturday night in round one. Two great racers. It's going to be an awesome show. It's been more than a decade since the Spider-Man Larry McBride has raced on Summit Motorsports Park. And last year, the Spider-Man was supposed to be here, but instead you were in the hospital. Thank goodness you're okay, but what's it mean to be back, to have another shot? Bill Bader Jr. to say, bring those fuel bikes back. Oh man, it's always great to come and summit. You see this place here, I mean, it's awesome. It's, uh, it's clearing most people's houses, okay? It's unbelievable. I'm just proud to be back here to be able to uh, do a show with Bill. So this weekend, we got four top-notch fuel bikes. I just showed you the trophy. It's awesome. There's some bragging rights on the line here. What do you think about this tough field that you have to contend with? Oh, it's going to be fun. You know, that's, that's what it's all about is have fun. You have fun and, and uh, you know, everything's going to fall into place after that. So it's, uh, you know, we're here to, uh, you know, to put the best show on that we can and uh, what the weather will allow us to do. I'm just looking forward to getting out there on the racetrack and uh, having a little bit of fun. You go out there and look at it, it's absolutely a knockdown, gorgeous racetrack. So I'm very excited. Yeah, truly amazing after Bill was telling us it was covered in dirt three weeks ago and now the water coming off of it is just crystal clear. I want to ask you about this too. Uh, some people worry about the stopping distance in Norwalk. You've got the carbon carbon brake, the parachute. How fast do you think you will be able to go here? Well, here's, here's the thing about it. We're not running for points here. We're getting, we're coming here to put a show on. So you got, that means run good, do good, try not to make any mistakes, don't smoke the tire, do a show for the people. That's what we're coming for. This track is really not short. It's four tenths of a mile long, so it's not, a, it's not that short at all. Uh, it's a little deceiving because of the hill that's in it. But as far as being short, it's not, I've been in the gravel here, but it was not Bill Bader's track's fault. It was Larry McBride's fault. You, you know, it's when I first went to a parachute and, um, you know, you, I, I wasn't used to the button, so I had to look down for the button. And that just that little bit that I took my eyes off of what I was doing, it just goes to show you can't do that. I looked for the button. I'd done covered way too much tr track. And I, on that particular pass, I don't know, I can't remember exactly what I run, 578, 579, something like that, around, I think, 240, something like that. And it was just too late. So I went in the gravel, um, which makes a hell of a mess. But we uh, ended up uh, coming back and cleaning everything up and making another lap and then taking some gravel home with us. I can't wait to watch you guys go after it. You ran in front of a very big crowd at the NHRA Virginia race this year, but this one that we're going to see on Saturday is going to be even bigger. How excited are you to get back in front of what is expected to be more than 40,000 fans? Oh, it's going to be awesome. You know, it's, um, I mean, there's people, there's tons of people here now. They're just coming in by the drove. I guess they'll be coming in all night long. I don't know, but there's going to be a lot of people. It's going to be a great, it's going to be a really nice show. I love it. Final question for you here as we let you get ready. We found out round number one, Bill Bader set it up. I didn't. You and your friendly rival, Mitch Brown. We saw a little rivalry ignite in St. Louis and uh, we know he's the most recent champion. You're the 21 time champion. That's going to be interesting in round one, isn't it? Oh, it'll be fun. You know, Mitch is a great guy. So, uh, I mean, we're going to go out there and have some fun and just hold on tight and uh, see if I can show him the back of the bike. Well, you're the most competitive man that I know. I just showed you the trophy. How bad do you want to take that trophy back to Newport News? Because I'm sure he wants to take it back to Clearwater, Kansas. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it would be an honor to definitely take that trophy back. I looked at it. It's a very beautiful trophy. So, it's, um, you know, it's nice to be able to get a trophy instead of a plaque. So, I, I, you know, I, I definitely want it. But the, my number one deal is, is I got brought in here to put a show on. And that's what I plan on doing and doing the best I can do and give 110% for Bill because I really appreciate what he does for the sport and bringing us here in front of all these people is, uh, is actually an honor for me to be here.
Thank you very much, Spider-Man. We appreciate it. He's the 21-time champion. He says he's putting on a show, but trust me, he wants to win as well. Guys, this is your Cornwell Tolls Night Under Fire preview. We got some great racing coming up. Four talented racers here. You can see it all on this channel. And if you like this video, here's another one for you. Subscribe right in the middle. And you know if there's anything fast motorcycles, we're in. From the Norwalk Night Under Fire, Cycle Drag rolls on.